Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and today it's time for the Algarve International Circuit for round 5 of our Moto3 career mode. Starting in pole position we smash the qualifying and away we go. Power setting 3 for the time being but if we need to change it as this one goes on we will change it to keep it very very interesting. To the right hand side there is my heart rate monitor so that uh, can keep you entertained throughout this Grand Prix but going into the primary corner mistake has been made for the man on board the KTM for the CIP Green Power team as Sergio Garcia dives with the other side for turn 3 for Lagos and runs it a little bit deeper getting beaten up as Grant going into the left hander there for turn 4 as Foggia has crashed way too many times this season can he stop it from happening here in Portimao so far so good as he'll take into the lead ahead of Sergio Garcia the young Spaniard to the left hand side of us and now to the right hand side. Beautiful move going up on the inside for the tall VIP corner. Difficult to position a bike up in the inside there but we did it there with absolute style. All eyes are focused on the number 7 right now ahead of us. The Rocket, Dennis the Menace, Dennis Fodger himself there keeping the tabs on us because he looks to be disappearing ever so slightly. We might need to really go for it here to just stay with the man on board the Leopard Honda. Craig Jones calling for turn 9, we seem to gain a little bit of time up on the inside there for the uh, Italian, but for the time being, Foggy is still sticking at, ahead of us with about 6 tenths of a second advantage. Sergio Garcia making me nervous a little bit from behind, looks like he was lining me up for a few lunges, but we're going to turn 13 now really tight to the apex, rubbing that left Alpine Star's elbow onto the floor as we position ourselves right here, just 5 tenths of a second behind. Dennis Foggia. Foggia going for that wider line to really curve the motorcycle around to pick up the speed, but for us going for that tighter apex on board the KTM. So, so far, Honda versus KTM for this bit of a drag down to the line there. Rear tyre on the right hand side getting a lot of work there as we now go into the slipstream and hopefully finish the first lap in first position. It looks like it's going to be neck and neck across the line. Grant takes the lead, the number 47 versus the number 7, but 40 more numbers ahead of you, my friend. So hopefully, well, that will equal the same in the championship. But into the Primera corner, Grant now takes the lead up on the CIP Green Power KTM. So to the right-hand side on board the Austrian Manufacturer's bike, and we're going into Lagos for turn 3. Three tenths of a second clear from Dennis Foggia. I did expect him to fight back either into Primera or to Lagos, but somehow hasn't seemed to have shown as a wheel again. Give it time, because of course uh, you never know what's going to happen in the roller coaster of Portimao. But for the time being, Autola's gone into third position as Grant runs it too deep into the Tor VIP. As now Leopard Honda, Dennis Foggia takes over at the front once again. 1.7 seconds is the gap to Autola. What on earth has happened behind? Massey was there, but he seems to have disappeared. But to the right hand side, we're going to Foggia! Oh, Foggia's dropped it! Foggia's dropped it. Foggia's out of this Grand Prix, takes out Xavi Artigas and Tatsuki Suzuki behind as well. I was not expecting Foggia to crash once again. That is how many Grand Prix in a row now? This is ridiculous for the Italian. Certainly not like himself in real life. He's certainly losing out as we get really pushed wide there from Adrian Fernandez. There was no chance for me to regain the position. And there is Jamal Masia. So wherever Masia went, he has now returned, and now we now have Ortola leading the Grand Prix from Garcia, Mino, and Adrian Fernandez. And Adrian Fernandez gets a little bit of a bump from one of the fellow KTM riders. As Masia really close to the CIP Green Power KTM, that was too close to call. But as Andrea Mino now slotting himself into the third position, missed out on a podium last time out in the Circuit of the Americas. Big wheelie into the left hander really cost him a chance of victory. And of course, in the race that my heart rate reached 170 beats per minute, it's a race that you certainly shouldn't miss out. So after watching that grow up this Grand Prix, check out the circuit of the Americas. But for the time being, starting lap three of seven, we'll try and outbreak Andrew Fernandez, trying to outbreak him really well there and very, very correct. But for now, Andrew Fernandez with a cutback. Is that not Raul Fernandez? Because it's you could certainly could have fooled me. To the right hand side for turn three. Got trying to get him to the rear of the Red Bull KTM. You see Andrea Mino with a change of direction there. Much quicker than we were. Just flipping it to the left hand side. Brilliantly done. The man on board the River Cole Honda. But to the left hand side for Tor VIP. We're going to attack into it and hopefully hold the position. Really difficult to maintain the, the lean angle and the speed into the fifth corner here in MotoGP 22. It does feel like he just wants to just not move and not sort of budge. Definitely going to have to keep an eye on that one because that's a corner I'll certainly be looking forward to towards the end of the stage of the races. Oh, more contact! Oh, Fernandez and Mas... Oh, my goodness! 
AI on this one. Certainly not liking the Samsung corner here in Portimao. Massive mistake from Andrea Mino. I think he just... Was it Andrea Fernandez who caused that and then took out Mino and Masia? Goodness me. Oh, punches down for the second time this Grand Prix. Whoa. <laughs> and he takes out my teammate, Joel Kelso. Goodness me. Oh, Joel Kelso was having a terrific race up there into the top ten for the first time this season. But bloody hell. What the, what on earth happened then? Fodja down. Masia down. Mino down. Adrian Fernandez. It's a typical Moto3 race is what it is. Goodness me. Alberto Sura just inherits third positions. That's a great spot for the man on board the River Cole Honda. It looks like Andrea Mino and Sura have just swapped places. Now, of course, there is no pick up the bike, etc. I can't remember what you call it now. Bike retrieval in MotoGP 22 for the AI. It's a feature we were promised, but hopefully we'll get it in the future. But across the line we will go. Still a bad lap from us because once again, someone crashing ahead of us has cost us a massive amount of time. Sergio Garcia, I'm sure he was involved in a crash earlier on, but he is still here and waiting to pounce on Ivan Artola. So brilliant stuff for the former Red Bull rookies rider. As Sergio Garcia runs it a little bit deep into Lagos, but he will then reposition for turn four. And I tell you what, this is a good spot for us. I have been using Power Sunny 3 because Ivan Artolo is getting away. 2.1 seconds, it's going to be oh, Sergio Garcia and Grand Big Contacts a little bit more almost. Wow, that was a brave and aggressive move from Sergio Garcia. Major props to the young Spaniard, the uh, baby face assassin, as Simon Crafar called him a few days ago. But to the right hand side, we'll go for turn seven. Right on the cusp now of a possible overtake. Still not close enough. Has Samsung re yielded any more crashes? It certainly has. Alberto Sura's down. Mario Aggi is down as well after his great podium in the Circuit of the Americas. Amino's gone down for another time. Has Sergio Garcia just a moment ago had a ridiculous wheelie going into that corner there. That was very strange. Going into the Craig Jones corner. Massive mistake for the young Spaniard. But to the left hand side, the gap has been cut almost into half now. 2.1 seconds down to 1.1 seconds is even or toll of act for the very first time. It's just dropped down to less than a second as there is more car ca chaos, carnage, and every other C word you can think of, calamity going on behind us right now. This is crazy stuff. And speaking of crazy, the crazy boy himself, Ayumi Sasaki, up there in fourth position on board the Husqvarna. But look at that graphic in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, guys. That is a ridiculous amount of crashes. There is so many gaps in that snake that... I don't know. That's not what I expected when I started this Grand Prix here today. But so far, the heart rate still is quite calm. Ivan Otola in the lead by three tenths of a second. We have clawed him in really, really quickly. Power setting three might have been a mistake. So I was not expecting to claw so much time back in such a little amount of time, but into Lagos will go. Ortola playing this one safe. A little bit too safe, I think, you know. He is going a little bit too wide, a little bit too eager on the acceleration. It's time for us to pounce. Tour VIP corner, does this yield an overtake? Not yet, but you better believe we're going to be certainly... Oh, it's going to be side by side as we go over the crest here into the left hander just ever so briefly for turn six. And then for the right hand side, you launch the bike over to the other side and then bring on the attack for turn seven, and then Samsung for turn eight. Into the right hand of a Samsung for turn eight, we'll go, oh, Tola touches the curb again, oh, another rider's down. <laughs> Typical Moto3, oh, and you miss, oh, you miss Sasaki. It's another one, another one's down. Sergio Garcia is four tenths of a second, is he gonna give us any sort of challenge, or is everyone else just going to keep on crashing? This is ridiculous, an absolute, joke of a Grand Prix so far. I hope MotoGP 22 can be fixed because that is way too many crashes into one corner. Yes, it's a difficult corner. Do you need to crash every single time? Mario Adji crashes for the fifth time this Grand Prix. And he's still in the top eight. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, two teammates up into the top eight as well. Kai Titoba seventh and Joel Kelso into eighth position. Great day for the CIP Green Power KTM so far. But now it'll beg the question. Does Sergio Garcia have enough to catch up to the man on board the KTM? Or does a second victory of a very young season beckon the man from Warrington, England? The number 47, is it going to be his chance to shine once again? A very, very narrow defeat in Dakota last time out against Tatsuki Suzuki. Will this one be as tight as that one? I don't think so. I don't think Sergio Garcia has got what it takes to really bring the fight to us on this penultimate lap. I hope so. I really do. It's no fun leading the Grand Prix by about 
one and a half seconds, almost two seconds. It'd be very fascinating to see now if any of these riders crash. So far, Grant, Garcia, Sasaki, Tatai, Sura, Nepa, Toba, and Joel Kelso finish up your top eight, but our lap time of 149.5 is going to be too much for them. This lap we're actually even improving on, so I think the AI are doomed. Very much so. On this penultimate lap, we're in the we're in the lead. I'm all calm. Everything's chilled. As we now go to the right hand side for Samsung. If you need any tips on how to break into a corner like that one, check out my braking guide tutorial. Link will be in the description down below. But to the left hand side, another crasher. Yep, another one's <laughs> another one's fell into the oh teammate. Oh look at the names. Another crasher. Oh Kelso's down. Oh my goodness. Samsung turn eight. How many victims do you want? How many victims are going to be in this Moto3 Grand Prix? Absolutely unbelievable. I can't even count the amount of crashes on this one. I can't even react to them anymore because there's just been so many. Crazy. Absolutely crazy stuff. But for us, smooth sailing up at the front. Almost a three second advantage to Sergio Garcia. And I don't even know what it is to Yumi Sasaki because looking at the graphic, Sasaki's going into the penultimate corner. In fact, he's even just leaving Sagresh. Yeah, this is a massive, massive advantage. It's not something you often see in Moto3, but I guess it's going to happen today due to all those ridiculous crashes. Final lap here in the Algarve circuit of Portimao. Three second advantage for the World Championship leader, who's going to extend his championship advantage by quite a significant amount. Sadly, there has not been much of a challenge in this Moto3 season so far. Winning in, in a couple of Grand Prix it took us to win in Argentina, and being competitive ever since. Now the first part of the season I didn't upgrade the bike, but I have had a few small improvements and small upgrades. I wish I hadn't, because it seems that the game is a little bit too easy. Now we were fortunate in this one because of the many, many crashes. If there wasn't that many crashes, I think Fodgy would have really given us a run for our money, so I'm disappointed that has occurred here today. But who knows what's going to happen for the next couple of Grand Prix. But what I will advise you to do is to hit that subscribe button and the like button, because of course the like button encourages me to make more content and subscribe keeps you here and ready for more content and Sergio Garcia has gone down this is unbelievable I think Sergio Garcia went down before Samsung for turn 8 and now Ayumi Sasaki is down Carlos Tatai will possibly inherit second position still not quite how far is Sasaki behind oh excuse me uh, Tatai behind Sasaki can you believe it Mario Aji's down again how many crashes is the Indonesian rider going to have in this one this is ridiculous I'm not even going to mention... Oh, Yumi Sasaki's down. The crazy boy is down. Carlos Tatai is now inheriting second position. Does my teammate Kaito Toba have a chance of getting on the podium? We now have a 16 and a half second advantage. What a ridiculous Grand Prix this one has been. And I tell you what, I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> I hope you can too. So across the line we will go as victorious now here in Portimao. And across the line... The spoils goes to Dr. Ace, Matt Grant himself. What a race, what a bizarre one. Grant takes the victory from Carlos Tata in second, Yumi Sasaki in third place, and a massive, massive gap for the riders to follow us. Too many crashes, too many weird mistakes, not a single championship contender is in the top 10. A look at the championship standings, and we have now gained 31 points clear from Tatsuki Suzuki. 43 clear from our proper championship rivals, as I assumed, would be Foggia and Sergio Garcia, and absolutely no sign of Andrea Mino. Carlos Tatai, the big winner, going 14 places up in ninth position. Look at the team championship, and we're now in the lead, but 13 points clear from Leopard Racing Honda, 50 points clear from CF Moto Racing Brutal GP. So then guys, thank you very much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed another podium celebration, another victory for us, great season so far, and I hope you're ready for plenty more rounds in this series. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video, ciao for now. Oh hi! Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.